Hello everybody, it is 2 o'clock on Thursday, April 2nd, and that means that it's tea time with me, Captain Awesome. Uh, it's a bit blustery, it's a little bit windy, uh, but to be honest with you, I'm kind of redoing my home office to make my presentations more presentable, and I didn't quite get it done. So I have come down to Town Neck Beach, and we're going to walk along the beach a little bit. Um, it's low tide, which is kind of cool. We can see some pretty neat uh, birds out there. Those are uh, brant that are out there in the marsh. Those are a northern uh, goose, uh, often confused for Canada goose, but that is not the case. They have a really neat black head and a ring around their neck. Um, they're not here for very long. Um, they're kind of passing through and they're in the marsh here eating um, algae that's at the bottom. And then I don't know if you can see them. There's some little uh, LBJs, little brown jobbies uh, going along the water there. I'm not sure what kind of birds those are. I'm terribly sorry. Um, they are uh, nibbling and eating what are called interstitial creatures down in the mud and in the rocks. Uh, so when we look at this area, we tend to think that it's kind of barren and uh, there's not a lot here, but in fact, there's a lot right under our feet. On the surface, we can see algae. We can see the evidence of clam shells and mussel shells, um, all that sort of stuff. But in fact, in the mud, there is a lot, lot, lot of life. In fact, if I were to scoop up a tiny little drop of sand and put it on a slide under a microscope, you would see that it has tiny little creatures living in between the grains of sand and in the mud. And those are called interstitial creatures. Interstitial meaning the space between. And that's what those birds are eating as well as regular plankton and, um, and uh, little worms and whatever they can get their hands on. Uh, and they have to eat pretty much constantly. They're letting me get a little closer. I don't know if you can see them kind of dancing along there. Um, again, I'm not sure if they're sandpipers or, or what kind of bird they are exactly. Uh, they're pretty ubiquitous around here. Um, they have put the posts up. You can see the little yellow signs in the posts because pretty soon piping plovers and terns are going to be um, nesting, so they're trying to protect that area. Uh, and so I just decided I, I needed to get out a little bit and we would walk around. Look at how cool they are. Look at them. And I don't know, I'm going to be quiet and see if you can hear them. It looks like there's maybe two different kinds of birds there. There's that dark one with the long bill, and then there's a little bit of a lighter one with a short bill. If anybody knows what they are, you know, let me know and I'll pass it along. I will look them up in my Sibley's book when I get home and post what they are um, later on. This is one, kind of one of my favorite spots. This is the salt marsh at Town Neck Beach, the boardwalk. You can see along the salt marsh, the peat, how some of those parts are collapsing and they're falling into the water. This area is constantly uh, in motion and being um, moved by the tides and the currents. There's a lot of life that comes into the marsh. And so I'm just kind of strolling, strolling along. I wanted to mention something here. It's probably been a tough couple of weeks for some of you. I know it has been for me. Uh, many of us are spending more time in our homes than we ever have. There's a little bit of uh, fear and anxiety about what's going to happen. If you're a intelligent individual and you pay attention and you know science, you know that it's probably not going to go very well for the next few weeks. And this is why I feel that nature is so important. Man has tended to feel as though they are the masters of nature, that we bend nature to our will. 
we tear down forests and dig out coal. Um, sometimes we do neat things like make national parks and, and, and observation towers. But this is kind of a stark reminder of how we are just as vulnerable as any other animal when it comes uh, to the vagaries of disease and evolution. A lot of people are going to um, get sick. A lot of people are, are going to die, and it's going to be scary. It's going to be tough. But when it's all said and done, we'll have the natural world to go out and interact with. I find a tremendous amount of peace out here, even on a windy, blustery day. How deep is the water? Right now it is uh, low tide. That water in the middle is maybe two or three feet deep. But when the tide is high, I would be um, submerged in the water at this point. It could be seven or eight or nine feet deep in the um, salt marsh creeks. That's a question from uh, Jessery. So, that's important. This is one of the activities that you can do. You can go out and you can go for a walk with your kind of immediate contacts. I've got what I'm calling a circle of six. Or you can go out and um, explore by yourself. It's an amazing thing to just get out and look and observe. Um, I've already seen periwinkles, brant. Um, I see a seagull. There's a lot of life out here. Um, blustery, windy. For instance, I've got a lot of periwinkles. Now, we may not think much of periwinkles, right? Just periwinkles, just a snail. What most of us don't know is that they are an invasive species. They came over with the pilgrims, probably in the bilge or on the hull of the ship, and they've steadily taken over since then. If you boil them, you can eat them. They're an edible creature, and in fact, were used as a food by the early colonists when they got here. And also, they can be used as a dye. The color periwinkle, which we think of as a, as a blue color, is emphatically that because it comes from periwinkles. The other thing is, this is a very rocky area, so we have a lot of glacial till here, and every once in a while, we find it absolutely beautiful. Just look at that. Simple, right? It's just a rock. Look at how beautiful those lines are. And that kind of stuff is around us all the time, right? Um, this is glacial till. This is all rocks that were left behind by a glacier. The sand moves from the north and through. If we get around to the other side and you can hear me, uh, we'll talk a little bit about how the canal, um, the digging of the canal and the building of the canal, while it allowed shipping and movement of goods to happen faster, actually created a unique dynamic here on our beach in Town Neck. So, woo, chilly willy, chilly willy. Um, just kind of looking to see what I might find. We get over to the other side, there'll be some more stuff washed up on the beach. Low tide is a, a good time. It is cold and it is windy. I don't know if I'll be able to do a full half hour out here. Um, how are you guys all doing? If you're watching, are you guys holding up well? What are you doing to keep, keep busy? Any suggestions for some folks about interesting things to watch or see or to do where you don't have to interact with folks and um, can still be safe and not go a little bit stir crazy um, just let me know I'm always willing to post some stuff on my uh, Facebook page um, to keep people active and occupied all right moving up the beach a little bit see they've got all this area roped off turns and plovers and now we're kind of a little bit higher and you can see around to the salt you can see it. there's an osprey nest out there in the middle and it's just been the last couple of days that the osprey 
have come back. Come back. Yes. Osprey migrate, and they migrate all the way to Argentina in the fall and come back here in the spring. Um, I come around here quite a bit. I fish in this creek in the summertime. And one of the things that happens here for sure is that this is dynamic and always changing. This kind of high mound of the gravel is new. There's almost nothing we can do about erosion. Um, I am a guy who speaks out kind of against replenishing the beaches all the time because it's money better spent somewhere else. And here was a good example of what I'm talking about. So we've got this neat orange rock right in the middle. That um, rock is in fact a brick, okay? Uh, probably from a house that came down in a storm or washed away. We oftentimes find, um, oh, Carrie, that's an excellent idea, just riding the storm. about our interaction with the environment that much. Not always understanding that those houses really are not going to last for too tremendously long. They are literally going to get washed out to sea. Um, will end up uh, being um, washed away and or covered because of the, the sea level rise. It's a pretty substantial number. Now, I say 20% of Cape Cod, but almost all of Florida will disappear. Uh, yes, Mel, it is uh, very, very good. So, a couple of things over here I'm going to check out. And then I'm going to head back to the car on the beach side. Can you guys hear me okay, or is the wind, uh, or is the wind too much? Woo. And you'll see that the water right now is kind of a blue-greenish color, and that's actually because it's full of plankton. plants and animals that are between us and the bottom of the creek. The wind is too much. Okay, I'm going to go back and get out of the wind. Those of you who have watched know that I am a fairly tall individual. I lose a lot of heat when you step. So uh, this is not a figured I'd give it a try. Uh, it's spring. Yesterday it snowed like five times. It snowed, and then it got sunny, and then it snowed, and then it got sunny. So, um, tomorrow I will be uh, back inside. Uh, let's do a quick vote. We've got five people watching. I can do a presentation about the snakes of Cape Cod. I won't have any live snakes, but we can talk about the snakes that we find on Cape Cod. Or we can talk about sea cucumbers. But you guys all chime in. Tell me what you want to talk about. Snakes or sea cucumbers? Both can be nice. That's good. Alright, I'm going to dip down out of the wind. Ooh. This is also one of the reasons why uh, we are looked at 
is a prime spot to have a wind farm in our area because we are on the Atlantic Ocean and it is pretty much always windy. And of course I'm keen to see as much would be pretty cool and if the weather's good I can take you to a place where we can actually get fairly close and see the seals right up close okay so I will see you oh I want to also mention uh, the community community media center that's in Dennis I think they might start um, showing these presentations on the community channel so keep an eye for me there um, can you imagine that somebody's actually going to want to see this more than once look at my hat look at how goofy that is i feel like uh kevin hart in the jumanji movie so anyhow i will um see you guys tomorrow with two we'll either be where the seals are or maybe we'll talk about them on an online presentation. You guys have a great day. Be safe. Ride your scooters in the driveway. And uh, we will see you tomorrow. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.